Welcome back to Biosignaling on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss hedgehog signaling. This is a process that's going to be very important in the discipline of developmental biology. You'll often hear about it in a class regarding that. And it's going to be a very important process, particularly during fetal and embryonic development and even other stages as well. And it's going to involve proteins referred to as hedgehog. Okay, And there's actually three kinds of these, although we're going to mainly focus on one of them. They're all going to function in basically the same way, through the same uh, signaling pathway. But those are sonic hedgehog. Yes, it's named after the character from Sega. There's also two others that are related. They're homologs called Indian hedgehog and desert hedgehog. Uh, but we'll mainly focus on sonic hedgehog, but they'll all function very similarly. All right, so hedgehog is a paracrine signal, and it's going to be released by one cell, such as this one over here on the right of my slide, and then it's going to function on the membrane of a cell adjacent to it, such as this one on the left. All right, so before we really get into the signaling pathway for hedgehog, we really need to understand what's going on when there's no hedgehog present. All right, so there's this protein called patched. And what patched normal function is to do is to inhibit this protein called smoothened. And when smoothened becomes inhibited by patched, smoothened cannot exert its function. Now, if smoothened was to become activated, its functions involve inhibiting this protein called GLE3 repressor and activating GLE2 and GLE3A. The activation of these two proteins, GLE2 and GLE3A, are necessary to activate GLE1, which will then upregulate sonic hedgehog or just in general hedgehog target genes. However, if smoothened is inhibited, then you cannot have activation of GLE2, GLE3A, or GLE1, and so this process of activating hedgehog target genes does not occur these genes remain transcriptionally off, okay? And it all has to do with the fact that patched is activated and smoothened is inhibited. So if I want to activate sonic hedgehog target genes, I need to reverse the situation. I need to have activation of smoothened and inhibition of patched, okay? And so now we're gonna talk about what happens to do that. So in this cell over here on the right, this is a cell that's gonna secrete hedgehog. It's going to manufacture it and secrete it. First we have a protein here. This is the immature form or most immature. It's called pre-hedgehog. Pre-hedgehog has to first be acylated. It has to actually have a palmitoyl group that's a 16 carbon fatty acid tail attached to it. That's catalyzed by hedgehog acyl transferase and what it's going to do is it's going to use a palmitoyl CoA to transfer a palmitoyl group onto pre-hedgehog making uh, a monomer of hedgehog, so HH1, that's a monomer. It's still not activated because two hedgehog monomers have to dimerize into a hedgehog dimer, HH2. And so once that dimerization occurs, this cell is free to secrete hedgehog out into the extracellular fluid out here. And it requires this protein called DISP. Um, this protein is actually called dispatched, uh, but it's usually abbreviated DISP, and this protein is necessary for the secretion of hedgehog dimers, which I'll just from now on refer to as hedgehog. So when hedgehog is secreted by this cell down here, it's going to act as a paracrine signal, and it's going to bind to a receptor on a nearby cell, probably a cell adjacent to it or a couple cells over, um, and that receptor is called patched. Now, what hedgehog does by binding to patched is it inhibits patched. All right, so let's think about this for a second. If you inhibit patched, can patched now inhibit smoothened? No, patched cannot inhibit smoothened because patched itself is inhibited. And so because you're inhibiting the inhibition on smoothened, smoothened by default will become activated. Okay, so initially remember smoothened when there was no hedgehog was actually just in a normal part of the membrane here with patched. And that actually allowed patch to inhibit smoothened. But as soon as hedgehog binds to patched, hedgehog inhibits patched. And so now smoothened is free to move into the cilia. And that's actually where it's going to be functional in this cell. It has to be in the cilia. 
So again, we have inhibition of inhibition, which leads to net smoothened activation. Okay, SMO is smoothened, by the way, if you hadn't caught on. So smoothen, as we mentioned, has two major functions here. First of all, it leads to direct activation of GLEE2 and GLEE3A. Okay, these are going to be proteins that are going to phosphorylate GLEE1, which is necessary. But smoothened also inhibits this protein called the GLEE3 repressor, or GLEE3R. GLEE3R's normal function is to inhibit GLEE2 and GLEE3A. So again, by inhibiting this repression or inhibiting this inhibition, this is another uh, factor that's going to increase the activity of GLEE2 and GLEE3A. All right, so we have direct activation and inhibition of inhibition. But in any case, we have the activation of GLEE2 and GLEE3A. These two proteins are going to together phosphorylate GLEE1. So see, it has a phosphate on here, and that's going to activate GLEE1's function as a transcription factor. And so GLEE1 in the phosphorylated state can then go into the nucleus, and it's going to bind to a region uh, upstream, probably the promoter of hedgehog target genes, and it's going to upregulate those genes. So you're going to now have transcription of these genes and subsequent translation. And depending on what cell type you have, of course, you're going to have different proteins and different overall types of development, different biological effects. But we're just looking very generally here. If you wanted to get into all the different biological effects per cell, you'd be here a year. But the point is, is GLEE1, Transcription factor upregulates hedgehog target genes. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to hedgehog signaling. Again, this is a really good example of a pathway where most of the activation is not direct activation, it's actually inhibition of inhibition. But inhibition of inhibition is like two negatives, a double negative is a positive. Okay, in this case, you inhibit patched. That releases the inhibition on smoothened, leading to activation of smoothened. And then we also see that same inhibition of inhibition by the inhibition of activated smoothened on the GLEE3 repressor, which leads to activation of GLEE2 and GLEE3A. All right, hopefully this video made sense to you. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.